Twitter has become kind of the de facto town square. Um, so uh, it, it, it's just really important that people have the, both the, uh, the reality and the perception uh, that they are able to speak freely within the bounds of the law. If in this case you are not successful in, you know, the board does not accept your offer, you've said you won't go higher, is there a plan B? There is. <laughs> Elon Musk would not divulge that plan B, but it appears that he's going to need it. In response to his hostile takeover bid, Twitter's board of directors announced today that they have adopted what is known as a poison pill to fend him off, at least for now. The move gives Twitter's existing shareholders time to purchase more shares at a discount to dilute Musk's ownership stake, which at this point sits at just over 9 percent, making him the largest individual shareholder. Musk made a cash offer of $43 billion, but there is a question of whether he even has that much liquid cash available. In any event, this is what The Washington Post's Christine Emba cites as a perfect example example of peak billionaire. The ability of one fantastically rich person to, without accountability, make decisions with potentially life-changing ramifications for many, many people based on nothing more than their mood and their ridiculously deep pockets. Joining me now is Democratic strategist Juanita Tolliver and Tom Nichols, contributing writer for The Atlantic. And Tom, I'm going to go to you because you have often said on the Twitters that the right in some ways is that person outside the glass looking in on the culture and jealous because they really want to be a part of it. They want to be on the other side of the glass. To me, this is the ultimate example of that. They have Parler, what is Truth Social's worth like 10, 15 cents <laughs> on Apple iTunes. They made all these other versions of Twitter. But in the end, they really just want to be on Twitter. And they're so desperate to be on Twitter that they're all cheering that Elon Musk will put all of them back on Twitter and they won't be stuck on Getter, which still to me sounds like porn. Your thoughts? <laughs> They don't want to. They don't. Um, they they don't want to talk to each other. They want to be in a public square where they can annoy other people. They keep saying, "Well, yes. we just want to express our views freely, and we want to be able to talk to each other without um, you, you know, you leftists and communists and you know vegans and spelling reformers, uh, you know, um, oppressing us." They don't, but they don't really want to talk to each other. They want to be trolls, and trolls need a pool of ordinary human beings to go annoy. And that's the thing that they keep getting denied. They don't want to go to Parler or Getter. Um, they want to be where they think they're they're um, ticking off all the people they don't like. And and they that's yeah, the I'm thing. You're absolutely right. They want to talk um, to the people on Twitter. They don't really want to talk to each other because they're not interesting. They're not interesting. And as a spelling reformer, I'm actually quite offended. I really do like to correct <laughs> people's spelling. Um, let me bring you in here, Juanita, because the other thing is whether or not this is even real, right? I mean, Twitter is very popular. It's popular with journalists and activists, and it's got a, it is a big town hall square, but I'm not sure it's profitable. And so there is sort of a theory, a conspiracy theory, that maybe he's doing this to like up the value of his stock or find some way to sort of profit off of saying he's going to buy it all and then not buying it all. It, it, does it even to you seem like a real thing that's going to happen? I don't think it seems real. I do think every single move that Elon Musk has made up until this point is sinister. Secretly buying shares starting in January, delaying disclosures before making his offer. All of it just sounds like, as Christina wrote, he got bored and decided he wanted to mess with yet another market moment and creating another potential SEC violation. He has a few under his belt, Joy, and we can't forget that. I think the other True. thing we can't forget is this is someone who is leading an organization that's been described by black employees as highly racist and toxic. And is that someone who should also be taking over another multi-billion dollar organization? And so Elon Musk comes with a lot of questions, but at the end of the day, I'm not buying that this is about freedom of speech, but I will buy that he just got bored and decided he wanted to make another hostile takeover. And I'm just wondering, it's, it's sort of like acting saying when we, like we won when you have a football team and you didn't get any money, nor did you get the trophy. <laughs> it's like they're acting like if Trump gets back on, that gives them something. That'll give you nothing. Why are y'all so could exercise that Trump get back on? Do you need him? Is he your daddy? And also T.O. and T.O.O. are not the same thing. Sorry about that. That is my spelling <laughs> reform uh, part coming back out. Um, let's talk about, to stay with you for a minute, Juanita, these abortion bans, they, th this is a scary direction that the country is going. And this idea 
We talked about this a little bit with Be with Better O'Rourke. This lie that they're not going to arrest people, well, they already arrested somebody in Texas. There is a long history. There's a piece in Mother Jones about this long, scary history of existing religious fanatics that work in hospitals, doctors, nurses, et cetera, turning people in when they have a, a you know, a, a, a history, when they, I'm sorry, when they have a miscarriage, um, if they've ever used drugs or marijuana and turning them in. Women are going to get arrested, right? Women are going to continue to get arrested, not just in Texas, but in Oklahoma, where they've essentially made it uh, outlawed anyone performing abortions and made that illegal. In Kentucky, where there's no clinics available or able to meet the new requirements of the new laws that they were just enacted. And so expect more women to get arrested because Republicans are presenting this as like a buffet of bans that they and their evangelical supporters have been pushing and wanting and promoting for years. And so you better believe that in addition to these bans, they're going to be waiting with bated breath for any Supreme Court ruling since there is a 5-3 split on the court that is going to essentially signal to them just how far they can go. So we should expect women to get arrested. We should expect abortion to be criminalized. And if Republicans get their way, completely wiped off the map of this country. And we don't know how that's going to play. The, I think they don't understand even or know how that's going to actually play in the election. I think they think it's going to help them. I'm not so sure about that. Uh, I, I'm glad I have Tom Nichols here, who is my resident in-house hip-hop expert. <laughs> so I'm going to play you a song, uh, Tom. I'm going to test your hip hop knowledge to see if you know this mega hit. Uh, this is by MAGA rappers Forgiato Blow and J360. That they have made a rap homage to Matt Gates. Play it. They treating me like Matt Gates. He's a Florida legend. He was born up in that Truman house. Who face a Republican? So Democrats they want him out. Never let him take our guns. He's the chosen one, yeah. Dedicated congressman, Matt Gay showing love. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. I'm yes. so sorry. I'm so sorry. Okay. <laughs> it's the way. <laughs> You just can't make this help up. Me. This is, this is going to send me back to listening to Led Zeppelin, and I think people know what that means. <laughs> Although Don Donald Trump was a staple of, of um, a, a lot of um, hip hop and, and rap in the past. And, you know, so maybe it's just guys trying to be transgressive and cool and saying, who is the who is the most absurd uh, loser there is that we can write a song about? Because now, look, you know, Joy, one thing they got is we're all sitting here laughing and talking about them, and now people it's know true. who they are by having done this completely inane and uh, you know utterly stupid thing that um, <laughs> I'm sure they will love telling their grandchildren about one day is the great contribution <laughs> of the culture. Um, you but know, at, you at know, time I was in a rap is... video. You know, I was in a few rap videos <laughs> when I was young and in the RNC uh, about Matt Gates. <laughs> um, but but it's in the in the attention economy as you get more and more desperate for a bigger and bigger jolt of stupid um you know <laughs> if this is what it takes that's what they're gonna do uh Juanita is hip-hop dead <laughs> because of this <laughs> for these people for these people right like I'm just like you chose Matt Gates, someone who's under federal investigation for <laughs> child sex trafficking as your guy that's the one you want to emphasize like I, I'll be honest, Joy, besides that clip, I made it to about <laughs> 10 other seconds when the producer sent me this link. I could not get far. I'm like, this is a joke, I, right? I, I, literally, my my, my, uh, my anchor producer standing right here just in case I fall down because I laughed so hard today, I almost <laughs> off, laughed my eyelashes off. These people are so jealous of the culture. They're like, we're going to get in the culture. We're going to have a rap video about Matt Gates.